Today we're going to demonstrate the uh, use of Aeromarine 321 epoxy resin and our six ounce fiberglass cloth to do some fiberglass layup. Uh, specifically, we're going to repair a hole in the hull of our boat. Um, we have a uh, half inch piece of fiberglass here. So we have a two inch hole in the um, hull of the vessel. Um, you can see that if we repair it from the inside rather than the outside, that the resulting cosmetic repair on the outside is much smaller. Um, you can't always get to the inside. Uh, matter of fact, it's rather rare because there's usually something in the way, in the way of uh, the hull on the interior of your vessel. But we're going to assume that you can today um, for this demonstration. Uh, the first thing that we're going to want to do is to uh, seal off the exterior part of the repair. So the primary consideration for your backing material is its flexibility. Um, you can use a six mil poly because neither the polyester nor the epoxy will bond to it. You can also use mold wax or epoxy mold release or polyurethane mold release depending on whether you're using polyester or epoxy. Today we're using six mil poly and we're going to back it with a very thin sheet of uh, fiberglass. Um, the uh, thin sheet of fiberglass works well if you have a curve that bends in only one direction or if the hull is relatively flat in that area. If you have a compound curve, this is difficult to use. It's difficult to get a, a full bond, a smooth surface on the, um, the hull. An alternative to that is uh, silicon. This is uh, Air Marine 128 brushable silicon. You can use this on a compound curve like this and then back it with a mother mold to achieve virtually any shape. Um, and that'll give you a smooth finish on the uh, exterior of the product when you're done. So with 6 mil poly in the fiberglass sheet, we are going to temporarily attach it. The patch is not going to exert any pressure, external pressure on this, so they're going to, it, it can be applied with the hot glue or any type of temporary um, bond. We're going to now take the hot glue gun and tack it. Okay, so we have the backing in place. We're going to work on the inside of the uh, patch now. The um, fiberglass has been ground down to a 12 to 1 slope. We've got a half inch thick fiberglass, so we need six inches of slope all the way around our original two inch um, hole. The um, uh, area has been uh, um, uh, cleaned um, with a de-waxing solvent. I've used Interlux 202 prep wash. Um, the area was cleaned prior to grinding so that during grinding you're not dragging any of the uh, mold wax, believe it or not there's residual mold wax on the vessel, um, into the area which would weaken the bond. Um, so the next step now is to apply our gel coat uh, to this area here which is the area that will be exposed to UV on the outside of the vessel. Gel coat is normally applied at about 20 mils. It's normally sprayed on, but for such small application, we're simply going to brush it into place. We are using a uh, polyester-based laminating gel coat, which is an air-inhibited cure gel coat. Um, again, the reason that we want a polyester base or a polyester gel coat on the exterior of the vessel is because of the UV characteristics inherent in polyesters, not inherent in epoxies. Um, so what we're going to allow it to do is to reach an initial cure to set, in other words, and um, then uh, we're going to apply a, uh, a saran wrap, poly poly, uh, saran wrap backing to the back of it to allow the inside to completely cure. Okay, we've applied the uh, gel coat. Um, the uh, gel coat will set in 17 to 20 minutes. Um, we need to ensure that the uh, bond to the gel coat and the epoxy is solid, so we need to ensure that the gel coat fully cures. Being an air inhibited um, gel coat, we will take uh, saran wrap like this and apply to the back of it 
and let it cure for another 15, 20 minutes to ensure that we have full cure on the uh, inside of the uh, uh, patch. Okay, our gel coat has set and now we want to ensure that the cure is complete. So we're going to apply the saran wrap to the back of it to force the uh, polyester to completely cure. Okay, next step will be to sand this out smooth and prep it for um, application of the fiberglass and the epoxy. It's important to understand the properties of fiberglass cloth, specifically that it's biaxial in nature, meaning that it has strength in two axes. If you pull opposite of those axes, you'll see that it stretches. So we're going to take advantage of that property, that strength, by taking each alternating uh, application of fiber class and offsetting it by just 45 degrees. That way we allow for strength in eight directions. On each piece of cloth that's been cut, I've made a mark on one side of the cloth to indicate the bias so that I can keep it straight while I'm applying the layers of cloth. You're supposed to do um, each layer of cloth and epoxy um, creates a solid layer at about 1 32nd of an inch. So for a half an inch, we'd need 16 layers. All right, last of 16 pieces. You'll see that uh, the marks on the alternating pieces are um, offset uh, 90 degrees and 45 degrees again to change the axis of the cloth to increase the strength of the uh, patch. Okay we're done. We've applied our 16 layers of fiberglass. We've wet out the uh, cloth. Um, the uh, 321 epoxy mix will um, continue to build heat but it does not build heat like um, a polyester uh, mix will. Um, you'll see recommendations to do this in multiple batches where you apply three to six layers at a time, let it cure, come back and apply the rest of it. You won't see that with the 321. We can apply this to a half inch thick and you'll see a temperature maybe of 180, 200, 220 degrees max which will not cook the patch and is uh, perfectly safe. Um, if we check the temperature now we can see that it is 81, 82 degrees. Over the next 30 to 40 minutes, we may see it hit a maximum temperature of around 180 to 200 and then start dropping back down to room temperature. This is the fiberglass that we repaired yesterday. Um, it's fiberglass, the epoxy is now uh, very hard. It's completely cured. We're going to uh, work on the cosmetic side of the patch now. Um, if you recall, we patch, we backed this with a sheet of mylar, a thin sheet of mylar, to give us a smooth surface and then we just hot glued it to the surface. We used a very flexible piece of backing material which is uh, perfect for a compound curve like on the hull of a boat. Um, next step will be to sand this area down smooth and then to fill it in or ferret with uh, fair, F -A -I -R, ferret with um, epoxy and microspheres. <laughs> Checking the level, make sure it's not um, too high, that it's below the surface that we want. Okay, we finished sanding the area. We're going to prep wash it now with denatured alcohol. You could use Interlux 202 if you prefer. Simply want to make sure that the area is perfectly clean. We're going to use microspheres for our filler here. Again, microspheres are uh, microscopic glass balloons. And uh, because they're full of air, they sand very easily. Perfect for a fairing compound. 
So I've mixed uh, two ounces of resin and one ounce of epoxy. I have uh, going to mix that with an equivalent volume of uh, microspheres. That's going to be our fairing compound. Keep adding the microspheres till you get a consistency that you, um, you like. I'm looking for something a little thinner than peanut butter, something like cake frosting because I'm working on a horizontal surface. If I were working on a vertical surface, I would want it thicker so that it stays where uh, you put it. But for this, this is perfect. We are putting a thin skim coat of the microspheres and epoxy on the outside repair. Then we're going to take off the excess. And we're going to let it cure overnight and we're going to sand it down tomorrow. So because we use microspheres with the epoxy, it's going to be very easy to sand. Um, tomorrow we're going to do a final light sand on it. We'll be done. We'll top coat it with a uh, marine polyurethane and that's it. The uh, repair is finished. Everything we've used in this repair you can buy on our website. That's the 321 epoxy resin system, the fiberglass cloth. Um, to get more information about it, go to our website at aeromarineproducts.com.